feel like I need to give you a forewarning for this video, because what you're about to watch may sound like one of the craziest things to ever be suggested about The Legend of Zelda. Keep in mind while watching that this is, in fact, a theory, not explicitly proven in-game or being heralded as being proven, but rather is an interesting what-if kind of scenario that I believe has some pretty decent merit, which is exactly the kind of video that I love doing on the channel. I was also helped by some of my fantastic fellow theorists over in my Discord server, and we'll be crediting them each fully at the end of the video, so please be sure to stay tuned for that. Now without further ado, let's delve into the final Masked Nintendo Bandit theory for 2020. We're all familiar with Ocarina of Time, right? No? Alright, let me refresh your memory real quick. Link, the Hero of Time, draws the Master Sword and travels into the future by seven years, defeats Ganondorf with the help of the Sages and Zelda, who seals the Demon King in the Realm of the Beyond, then sends Link back in time to the now child timeline to relive his child days. Those days continue into the events of Majora's Mask, and centuries later the events of Twilight Princess, etc, etc. But let me pause right there and rewind a bit, because I already passed what the focal point of this entire theory is about. You see, when Zelda plays the Ocarina of Time and sends Link back in time by seven years, something strange happens. Link had previously been sort of fast-forwarding into the future by drawing the sword and rewinding back into the past by placing it into its pedestal, as evidenced by his age. But now, when Zelda sent Link back in time for the final time using the Ocarina of Time, the Hero of Time was rewound into the past like before, but this time, since the sword was not involved in his time travel, he was also actually removed from the current adult timeline and placed instead in the child timeline, shattering the connection between the two points in time and instead creating two completely different timelines. This specific piece of lore isn't ever debated and is evidenced by the official timeline and beginning animation of the game Wind Waker when it details the legend of the Hero of Time, who simply appears out of nowhere and then disappears from their timeline after defeating Ganon, never to be seen again. And after the credits roll in Ocarina of Time, Link is shown to be kind of waking up in this new child timeline where Zelda sent him, with the Master Sword sitting quietly in front of him. This is what I wanted to talk about, the Master Sword. You see, I'd like to propose a question that has the potential to change the Legend of Zelda as we know it. And that question is this. What if the Master Sword was also removed along with Link from the adult timeline? Let's talk about why this is a possibility first, and then we'll talk about why it's a probability. Visually, we can see that Zelda uses the Ocarina and does in fact send Link back in time with the Master Sword still on his back. And when Link is shown next, he's glancing with surprise at his body, realizing he's a child again. Something that hasn't surprised him since the very first time he drew the Master Sword, implying very strongly that this wasn't his doing. He didn't place the Master Sword back in the pedestal this time. It was most likely the work of Zelda and the Ocarina sending him there. But the evidence here is more than just visual. In Twilight Princess, which features this very same Master Sword as it takes place in the timeline shown here, the Hero of Twilight draws the sword from the pedestal that's present in the ruins of the Temple of Time that now exists in the Sacred Grove. The Temple of Time later on in the game becomes a dungeon that Link must complete, and he enters it by traveling to the Temple of Time's past and placing the Master Sword in its pedestal, in the past. Do you see what I'm saying? Link has now traveled at this point to a point in time before he drew the sword from this pedestal, yet the sword is not present here, in the past. It's also unlikely that the sword was just simply taken by someone in the past, as it is shown in many games to only accept the hero as its wielder, and the Hero of Twilight is most likely the hero that appeared immediately following the Hero of Time since he is visited by the Hero of Time, aka a, the Hero Shade. I believe that what this means is that this Master Sword, being a relic created by the goddesses themselves, transcends time and can only be present in one time frame or timeline at a time. Otherwise, Link should have come across the duplicate Master Sword when he walked through a portal to the past. And yes, I know that there are several appearances of the Master Sword in the Fallen timeline, but that timeline isn't like the adult and child ones. The Fallen timeline is actually not a timeline split, but is rather an alternate reality that happens if Link is defeated meaning it operates on a different set of rules and can indeed feature the same blade at the same time. Bringing it back though, if we apply this evidence and logic to the Master Sword that has seemingly followed Link back in time at the end of Ocarina of Time, we can fairly safely deduce that it was in fact removed from the adult timeline. Which is crazy to think about because it forces us to ask this next question. If this is the case, then what sword does Link draw in the Wind Waker if THE Master Sword is no longer present in the adult timeline? Well, naturally, he draws the Master Sword. 
Are you confused yet? Good, let's continue. What if this is a different, man-made Master Sword? We know that the people of Hyrule are no strangers to attempting to make other Master Swords, as is evidenced by the Royal Guard Swords in Breath of the Wild, which are said to be attempted replicas of the legendary blade using Sheikah technology. So let's assume for a moment that they were successful, and this is in fact another Master Sword. There are several differences between this Blade of Evil's Bane and the previous Blade of Evil's Bane that I'd like to point out. The first and most prevalent being its drastically different appearance. Wind Waker was created with a completely different, more cartoony art style, which is one thing, but while the blade does bear some similarities, this Master Sword features a different coloration, a different hilt, a different handle, and a strange symbol at the top of its handle that isn't present anywhere on the original Master Sword. And by the way, Nintendo is more than capable of designing the blade to look roughly the same across different games as they've done with Skyward Sword, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and Breath of the Wild which have each also featured different art styles, albeit not quite as drastic as Wind Waker's. Secondly, the Master Sword from Wind Waker is in a completely different location than where it was previously, its previous location being the Temple of Time. In the Wind Waker, the sword is present in a new chamber located underneath Hyrule Castle that is surrounded by images of the sages from Ocarina of Time. A new chamber of the sages, if you will. The Master Sword has never been kept inside the castle before or since. This blade also requires the prayers of two new sages to empower it with the power to defeat evil, when previously it was none other than the goddess Hylia herself who blessed the blade with that very power. The sages were not a part of the process at all. And finally, there's also the fact that the blade serves to effectively lock the entirety of Hyrule in a time stasis, which once again is a unique trait never seen before or since. There is also some evidence we can gather from Ganondorf's knowledge of the blade. When Link first confronts the Dark Lord, he laughs at the young hero's attempt to slay him, but what what Ganondorf says at this time is particularly interesting. He says that the blade is also a sort of key, a most wretched little key that has kept a seal on me and my magic intact. And then he goes on to say, what you hold is useless. Go back to the world below and tell that to the pathetic fools who made this blade. There are two very big lore bombs he just dropped. The first being that the blade has been responsible for sealing his power and his monsters away. This contrasts where and how he was previously sealed at the end of Ocarina of Time. At the end of that game, Zelda states in the original Japanese version that Ganondorf had been sealed by the sages into the world of darkness, meaning he was not sealed in any part inside the original Master Sword. And I'll come back to why later on in this video. Secondly, he states that Link should take the blade back down to the world below, meaning Hyrule, and tell the, quote, pathetic fools who made this blade that its power has vanished. This is actually huge, as it implies the Blade's creators to be residents of Hyrule. I highly doubt he would be referring to the goddesses as being in the land below, and also being, you know, pathetic fools. If anything, Ganondorf respects the goddesses and even prays to them at the end of the game, as all he wants is their Triforce, so that he can bring glory to the land of Gerudo. But you know who he would call pathetic? The sages who previously sealed him away. But that's besides the point. What we now have is a Blade that looks differently, functions differently, and is located in a different place than the original Blade of Evil's Bane, which was most likely removed from this timeline. Finally, it's time to piece all of this together. Let's take a look at what I believe happened before the events of the Wind Waker that led to this duplicate blade being made. In the age following the Hero of Time and original Master Sword's disappearance, the mortals of Hyrule experienced a time of peace. The Seven Sages, who were still around after Link's disappearance as evidenced in the Sword Chamber, remembered the final words of Ganondorf, which promised that he would return so long as he held the Triforce of Power. Since they knew he would eventually return and the Master Sword was no longer around, they created a new Master Sword that operated off of their Sage Power for the next hero to wield against the Demon King. An age passed. The Sage's numbers, for whatever reason, dwindled down to two. Eventually, Ganon did indeed break out of the Sage's seal and once again terrorized the people of Hyrule. The Hyruleans then prayed to the gods above for the return of the Hero of Time, but no hero appeared. Which, by the way, if you're interested, I have another video covering which will be linked in the description below. It was at this time that I believe the king and the allies of the goddesses took matters into their own hands to save the land of Hyrule. As we see from the Wind Waker, the king was the individual who was behind the breaking of the Triforce of Wisdom in an attempt to hide it and the princess from Ganondorf, who wanted the completed Triforce. But even though the Triforce of Courage had also been shattered and scattered across the land, they knew this was all at most a simple hindrance to the Dark Lord, and they still needed a 
hero to arise in order to defeat Ganon once and for all, but still no hero appeared. With his back up against the wall and no one and nowhere to turn to, the king then made a plea to the gods above, who as we know decided to flood the land of Hyrule, but according to the king gave the Hylians some time to prepare. I believe he and the sages then laid a trap for Ganondorf and his forces by allowing them to enter the castle, and then freezing them in time with the sage and possibly Sheikah made master sword, taking some Hylians to the mountaintops, and then allowing the gods to flood the world below in hopes of sealing Ganondorf beneath the waves forever in the beautiful, destroyed land of Hyrule. But of course, Ganon was not so easily defeated. He once again broke free of his seal and emerged atop the waves and established the Forsaken Fortress. Ganondorf, who now knew of a new blade existing under the waves, then killed the final remaining sages that were empowering the blade in the Earth and Wind Temples, partially in an attempt to free his power from the world below, but also preventing the blade from being able to be used by any potential hero, and also explaining why he knew of its lack of power in the game. Ganondorf had been burned once before by allowing and underestimating a young boy to obtain the legendary blade. And though he was unsure of the existence of a current hero, he was not about to make that same mistake twice. Then, the events of the game transpire. And when Link, who had not only retrieved the Master Sword, but also led two new sages to the temples in order to empower it once more, defeated Ganondorf with the blade at the end of the game, the sword seals Ganondorf by turning him to stone, something the blade accomplished by the power of the sages that has never been seen before or since. The king, racked with guilt from wishing for the demise of his beloved land of Hyrule, wished now for its final destruction, leading to the land, her king, the demon, and the blade sleeping forever at the bottom of the ocean. It's the ultimate story of mortals trying desperately to save themselves from their own demise, and it all started with the forging of a new master sword. But that is just our theory. What do you think? Is the Master Sword actually a different blade in The Wind Waker, or the same blade every time it shows up? Let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed watching, as it will help spread the video around on YouTube more than you know. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to stick around in 2021, which is crazy, but it's right around the corner. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I was helped in this theory immensely by the good theorists over on my Discord server, including but not limited to Lon Lon Historian, aka AKA the Dad, Lorulian Historian, Baro, the Scientician, Legend Zone, who actually has his own YouTube channel linked below, and Stang says, Thank you guys for helping this theory come to life, and if I missed anyone, please feel free to make yourself known in the comments below and I'll give it a heart. As always, huge thanks to my amazing supporters, and say hi to the new faces of Cade, Cows Eat Pie, and Selena Rose, who have all joined the ranks of my elite. You guys make my day every day and have made this holiday season the best one ever. If you're interested in supporting the channel and having a hand in making the next video come to life, please feel free to check out that join button located below any of my videos or the links in the description below for my Patreon page. Also, there are only a couple days left to pick up some 100k limited edition MMB merch, so please check out the store also in the description below and use the code HAPPY100 for 10% off any order. Order. That's all I've got for this one, so as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your year. And I'm sorry for my dogs barking in the background right now. But really, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for 2020. I hope to see you next year. This is Mass Nintendo Bandit, signing out. Peace!